In just a few days, the New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams will battle it out in Super Bowl 53. For the players on the field, it will be the pinnacle of their pro football careers. But what about life after the NFL? Our economics correspondent Paul Solomon talked to former tight end Martellus Bennett about his pursuit of an entirely different career. It's part of our series, Making Sense. I'm weird as <laughs> I mean, weird as stuff. I mean, <laughs> no, you, I'm weird as... I'm very weird. How's I'm that? Very, I'm very, very <laughs> weird. Martellus Bennett may be the most outspoken professional football player of his generation. He also excelled at tight end for five teams, won the 2016 Super Bowl with the New England Patriots, and then while on a spiritual retreat in Japan, retired at age 31. I don't always answer bird calls, but when I do, they're from Tom Brady and Gronk. But during his 10-year career, Bennett was known as much for candor and wit as winning plays. And he's notably candid about the economics of pro sports. When did you realize that football was a business? Well, one of the moments was when I first had to write a check for taxes. Like, I didn't know what the f taxes were, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> taxes, like, I thought they took that directly out of my check. You mean they only withheld, you know, 20% when they're supposed to do another 17%? Now I got to write a tax to this guy I have heard of, but I've never met personally Uncle Sam. Like, what the hell is going on? You grow up, no one really teaches you about taxes, especially as an athlete. Even in Bennett's middle class family, finances weren't discussed but he did learn a lasting economics lesson at age 14 when the high-flying energy company Enron went bust due to corporate malfeasance and put his dad out of a job. I just remember the economically changing in our household too. My dad comes out, he's a black guy that's an IT. There's 15,000 people all in the same job. For him to try to find a job in that space, you know, not being able to find work for a long period of time. In Houston. In, in Houston. Right. And this, at that moment is when I realized I was going to be an entrepreneur in the rest of my life. I never wanted to work for anybody because the circumstances that we went through as a family wasn't because of my dad. It was because of the people at the top of a company that he worked with. Seven years later, Bennett was a high draft pick in the NFL. What was your signing bonus? Uh, was it 2.5 or was it 1.5? Whatever it was, it wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking 1.5 or 2.5 million dollars. Yeah, right? million dollars, yeah. I don't have any of that money from that contract. <laughs> I don't know where it's at, don't know where it went to, where I was spent. Like, I was a 20-year-old kid. Didn't really have people around me who managed that amount of money in their lifetime, so like, they couldn't really tell me how to manage it as well. What he did with the money was straight out of a kid's fantasy. I cashed a big check and I got a briefcase and I like handcuffed myself to the briefcase and I took it home and you know I just threw the money in the air and it's like I'm rich you know just throw money in the air and I laid in it and I woke up there was like 20s on my face from sweating and the, the money then I put it all back and took it back to the bank. I turned the silly fan on too you, you, for the special effects. So, so that the money was swirling? Yes. Yeah. At the fundraisers as a kid they used to do this thing where you get in this, this this machine and they turn it around all this money will fly out yeah yeah absolutely. right and I never really got picked to go in that machine <laughs> right I'm like damn I'm like if I can get $20 I was like I had a plan I'm gonna do my shirt like this I know how like the whole time I'm just ah, pick me pick me pick me pick me and I all through middle school I never got picked like you know what I'm saying I always wanted to be the guy in the money machine and every time I knew they would come I would dress appropriately for with a with a big apron you yeah mean, you know, like so you I can... just had a big plan for getting all the money you know what I'm saying and I'm right, like right. why everybody wait for the money to flow no one gets it off the ground just sit down and like they never picked me right but then I got drafted and I had all the money and then I created the machine for myself and I was able to get all that money and I felt great about it at its peak, Bennett's annual pay was over $5 million. But he soon realized that in football, the money only floats for so long. So he began saving, and in 2014, formed a multimedia storytelling company, the Imagination Agency, which grew out of his love for cartoons and sketching them, and his love of books. My goal is to be surrounded by books. Even more books than his literary inspiration. I've never seen so many books in all my life. Bell from Beauty and the Beast. I think it was every reader's dream to have that library. Did your teammates read? <laughs> no? Is that, why is it funny? I, I, I mean, a lot of them, the majority of them, nah. Like, why read? Your world is totally different, so you're not growing your skills. And a lot of times in college and high school, you didn't have to read either, right? You was pushed along because of your talent. Oh, hey, I'm just a dinosaur reading about dinosaurs. 
But Bennett, who says he majored in eligibility in college, read voraciously on his own, pursued a lifelong interest in art, and began releasing work while still playing, preparing for life after the NFL, the initials some say of not for long. If the average career in the NFL is three and a half years and the average lifespan is 70 something years, that is a tiny blip on your lifespan. Right. So if this is all that you really care about and this is who makes you what you are, then you're gonna suffer for a long time in a grand scheme of life. But you know, I wanted more. Cupcakes! Even NFL players who do try to diversify away from football, like the recently retired Brian Arakpo and Michael Griffin, usually get into business too late, says Bennett. You got to ride that wave while you have their attention. I always tell guys, like, you have their attention right now. Because once you're out of the league, no one's really going to care. So right now I'm mapping out those next paintings. For those. Since his retirement last year, Bennett has hurtled himself into his work at the Imagination Agency. I'll be the hero of my own story. Producing an animated series, mobile apps, and children's books about AJ, a character based on his four-year-old daughter, Austin Jet Rose. A new book will come out in March, a letter of encouragement to black boys. In a black community, we don't really get to experience escapism as kids, right? We don't get the dream of being astronauts and seeing ourselves or kids that look like us in these movies or in these, sci especially sci-fi, you know what I'm saying? We're just happy with Lando and Star Wars, you know what I'm saying? You got a lot of guts coming here. You get to the library, you shuffle through all the books, you look at through the books, like, dang, like, this book, this book. No characters in these books that look like you. Only 2% of children's books are kids of color. Try some of this, it'll do you good. Consider Roald Dahl, who, under pressure from his agent, uncolorized the lead character of one of Bennett's all-time favorite books, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But then it came out that Charlie was, in Roald Dahl's mind, Charlie was black. His estate said that, and I was like, oh, that would, for me to be able to, like, as a kid who admired Willy Wonka and to have a kid that looked like me go to the Chocolate Factory, could you imagine how that would blow my mind? I'd probably be making chocolate right now somewhere. <laughs> Now, football is still a big part of Bennett's life. He co-hosts a weekly digital show called Mostly Football. His brother, Eagles defensive lineman Michael Bennett, was a guest when we dropped by. When are you going to join me in retirement so we can go out here and take the world by storm? If you're still playing great, it's kind of hard to retire and not play. So, on the eve of the Super Bowl, a final question for the former New England Patriots tight end. So. Everybody hates the New England Patriots, except, of course, people who live in the region, right? Yeah. Why, and is it justified? Because everyone has a team they want to root for, and they have all these, every year the Cowboys are going to win a Super Bowl, right? Every single year, you know, Baltimore Ravens are going to be a new team. The Steelers are going to go back to the playoff, like the Giants, like everyone's rooting for this team. And then at the end of the day, who's always there? The Patriots, right? It's like, damn, how do they get to enjoy this moment so often? It's just hard when you constantly have hopes and dreams and always have to watch someone else win. On Sunday, we'll learn if the Patriots dash yet more hopes and dreams, but Martellus Bennett will be trying to cash in on dreams of an entirely different sort. This is economics correspondent and reluctant Patriots fan Paul Salmon reporting from Los Angeles.